Hey everybody, Rodman here. Thanks for tuning in to Stationeers. So this episode, I hope to get some uh, base pressurization going. I do need to fix some things that I uh, screwed up uh, last episode or the episode prior. Uh, I sort of messed up the uh, the vitals uh, cabling system here, and uh, I'm going to be fixing that right away. This should have been never snipped, and yeah, that is now all set. Well, that was pretty pretty quick. Um, other little projects I want. So another thing I wanted to do is to uh, hook up water to the water pipe, and uh, likewise hook pollutants up to the pollutant pipe, so that we can have water run into the farm and pollutants to the air conditioning. So that's going to be uh, necessary. Uh, I'm going to redo a little bit of this purple uh, air network because it doesn't need to be as T-junction-y as it was. All right. Uh, the next little thing is snip a pipe off of each of this, and that looks good. Now, uh, before I go any further, I want to add in a sleeper pod, um, into my base. So, let's put the old cryopod here, and the sleeper pod is going to go, um, right in this nook here. So, I will set up for that. And that's the last uh, sort of installation that I need to do uh, before uh, before the sort of pressurization of the base. Alright, so now we can actually put something down. Uh, yes, so let me go make that sleep pod. Uh, and then we'll start to do the gas mixing and pressure, which is exciting. Finally getting to do it. So Andy mentioned that the cryopod is more for space travel uh, because you kind of have to stand upright when you're using it, and the sleeper pod is more for base, so I agree with that fully, and uh, we will set up a sleeper pod as a result. So this would be kit sleeper. So I gotta do a whole lot of scrolling, and there it is. So iron, gold, copper. Copper, iron, gold, and we'll get that sleeper out. Now, I'm going to uh, empty out some of my bags. I don't need all these pipes. I'm also going to need yellow paint. Um, even more pipes, huh? I'm going to want my yellow paint. I'm also going to want a potato. I'm going to split one off this stack. Because I don't want to go hungry. Uh, I don't need the... Um, Heavy cables either. I'll put those away. Now, I have been eyeballing my power tower, and I think I need some more solar attached to it. But uh, that's something I can I can do a little bit later. All right. So here's the cryo sleeper or the uh, sleeper pod. Uh, for the sleeper pod, I'm also going to want um, one pass event, which I have in storage down here, so let me get that going. Let's see, here is a pass event. All right, let's hook up the sleeper, and then I'll do the, I'll do a quick, uh, oh, another thing I need to do is set up my bottom airlock. Uh, the bottom airlock is, uh, 
is um, not hooked up, not set up. Oh, why am I even calling that? I don't really need to. Okay, so sleeper pod. We'll have a little pass event here. We will put the sleeper here. Uh, there's different ways to wire this up or set this up. I'm going to set this up the really easy peasy way, which is uh, basically the pod is going to breathe air, base air. So, um, yeah, which is just so much easier to do than um, setting up that it has its own filtered air. Uh, basically, the sleeper pod is really for like multiplayer games when you want to go idle or AFK or offline while the server's still on. Uh, not so much for single player games. It's not something I'm going to need in my single player game. So that's why I'm not paying it a lot of attention. All right, and then put this window back so that our air locks are airtight. Speaking of windows, we got one on the inside of the base here. Let me make sure that we don't have other windows that I accidentally have forgotten about. No, all right, that was the only one. Um, put the wall back, or the floor back, rather. I can't tell. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. It was. All right, so there's our sleeper. It's not wired on yet, so let me wire that on. And this is just going to be part of the vitals. Again, not really planning on using the sleeper much, if ever, but might as well have it wired up correctly. Uh, speaking of wired up correctly, uh, let's also put the um, the benches here. Oh, the benches here wired up as well. That way, I can use the benches for for whatever. So now these benches can power on and power up the the stations. Good. Uh, next. Uh, all right. So we have purple pipe. Okay. We have all our pipe colors that we'll need for the gas mixing over there. Uh, except for pink. Oh, no. I have pink in my backpack. All right. I'm going to just put the pink down. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is the bottom airlock that had never been configured oh but you know what this airlock inside probably has Martian air so I have to uh, I'll have to enter from the outside or else I run the risk of contaminating my pressurized base don't want that no thanks Uh, set this inward and vacuum it. Uh, actually, I'm not even going to do that. So the way to set up a um, an error lock, you have to have the external door open anyway. All right, so this should be base mint. For now, it's going to be zero KPA because I don't have a pressurized base yet. Sensor, external door, interior door, external vent, interior vent. Okay, that's all set up. And I will cycle it. I want to do a little bit of analysis just to make sure that um, all the air inside of the holding tanks and all that are all good, as they should be. Because right now, yeah, there should be nitrogen, a microscopic amount of nitrogen uh, in the base because I do use my jetpack. And I'm not going to stop. I'm Nitrogen is a very common gas that we're going to find in the base. Uh, so... Yes, this airlock is set up correctly. Good. Then I do believe it is time for gas mixing, which is an exciting landmark. So let me go make two gas mixers. Jetpack on. 
Mm. Looking at those batteries. I'm gonna um, temporarily supplement. Once the so the the problem is what the reason why um, this is draining so bad is because of the microscopic amount of um, uh, of nitrogen that's in the base. The heaters are always triggering on. So the base is trying to heat up a tiny microscopic amount of nitrogen constantly, and it's causing it to uh, to drain the batteries away because it's never going to achieve that happy temperature setting because it, it literally isn't designed to, <laughs> which, is, which is why my, my batteries are draining. Now, once the base is fully operational, um, we should have to cool way more than heat because humans and plants we all give off uh heat um so it, it won't be a permanent issue of having uh, of that all right so we want two gas mixers and then i also want one volume pump In we go. Light on. Light on. on. All right, so the first gas mixer is going to be set up uh, like here, and next one here. And I won't set up the volume pump yet. So the first run that we're going to want to do is nitrogen so let me color these pipes so the nitrogen is going to run as input one into this mixer and then we're going to want let's split half uh, split one will work to run the carbon dioxide. Oh, wrong color. Oh, crud. All right, carbon dioxide to the mixer. Uh, let's make sure that uh, that it's pure gas. I mean, they sh it should be. Because uh, I hadn't screwed it up, but yeah, pure CO2, pure N2, perfect, perfect. Uh, then I'm just going to put um, pipes down that are gray. Actually, the middle one here, or even the uh, the back one here, is going to be a T, uh, a junction. And I'll explain why in a minute. And... That should be just vacuum, and it is, because I haven't introduced any gas into it. And then I'm also going to paint it yellow, because it's it's not actually CO2, and it's not actually nitrogen, it's some mix of the two gases, right? Uh, then the next is going to be my oxygen. And then after that, uh, we are going to need some purple pipe again. I'll just take it from here because it doesn't really matter. And this is going to lead to the outflow vents. So that's my gas mixer setup. Really straightforward, I, I think, personally. Uh, then I'm going to want a volume pump right here facing outwards. Uh, so like that. Maybe yeah, like that. And this is so that I don't get any pipe ruptures. So if the gas mixer, and I'll, I'll explain, I'll, I'll just hook this up right now and I'll explain a little later. Uh, but it's to prevent blowouts.
and it will need uh, it will need logic hooked up to it to to work proper. All right. So now that it's laid out, I can explain. I just didn't didn't want to screw that up. Uh, so the way these gas mixers work is you take two different gases in input one and input two. So input one is nitrogen. Input two is uh, carbon dioxide. And I'm gonna say the nitrogen I want. Uh, 97% of the gas I want is to be nitrogen and 3% of the gas to be carbon dioxide. And as long as there's nitrogen carbon dioxide available, output will be the 97-3 ratio that I've asked for. Uh, so this yellow pipe should be a mix of 97% nitrogen, 3% carbon dioxide. Now the reason I have this volume pump here is in the case that this uh, pipe ever becomes super pressurized, I don't want it to blow, uh, so this volume pump will will be hooked up to a logic eventually where if the pressure in here, which will also require a digital valve, so let me get a digital valve and hook up a digital valve, but basically if the pressure in that um, pipe ever exceeds um, a safe limit, uh, we will turn on the volume pump uh, and then bring that, that down. And for digital valve, I need a little bit in bar. And they, these are just, it's not necessary. Uh, they're just, um, they're like safety precautions that I can take uh, to make sure that I don't have blowouts. But they're, they're not, it's, it's really not necessary to, to do this, uh, I'll be honest. 99.9% um, .9 of the normal base operation, you won't need these sort of safety valves. Um, which is equally true of the one that controls my carbon dioxide, but it's, it's smart to have. So this digital valve here, will have to replace one of these uh, pipe sections. Oh, this is a digital valve. I meant, um, oops, I made the wrong thing. I meant pipe analyzing, analyzer. <laughs> I made a digital valve. Oh boy. And then I put my welder in my backpack. All right, digital valve. I don't know if I'll ever need you, but I'm gonna put you away. Pipe analyzer, so that's Electrum. That sounds about right. Not Invar. Kind of wondering why that was. All right, pipe analyzer. There we go. That's the ticket. Now, initially, I'm just going to hook up my uh, my gas mixers and everything without safeties and without logic and I can add in the logic later all right so there's my pipe analyzer I'll just have the data go up like that so I can see it um all right and then the mix for this is the gas 2 is uh oxygen so I'm gonna have 20% oxygen um, Earth is, actually, well, let's do 21%, because Earth is 21% oxygen. Okay, there we go. Now we wire this on, but I want to wire it to the, uh, oops, the blue cables network, so let me go grab some blue cable for that. And wire all this together. Done. And now, if I turn on the gas mixers, and this volume pump, uh, I don't know, 100 liter, it doesn't really matter. If I turn on these gas mixers, we should see that this should be a 97.3% 97, 97, mix 
And then here we have a, you know, uh, it's more CO2 than you'll find in Earth's atmosphere. But that's basically the mix we want. 21% uh, oxygen, 76% nitrogen, and 2% CO2. Perfect. That's exactly, exactly what we want. So this purple pipe network is totally ready to uh, become uh, outflow. So before I do that, there's some things I need to do. I need to put glass sheets um, back in to, to separate the maintenance areas from the rest of the base so that this becomes isolated. So one way to check if this is the case, this is room 271. And I'm just going to leave this vent on. This is shouldn't be room 271. This is room 272. It has become a new room. And also has some X in it. That's not good. I don't know. Oh, because this airlock had uh, Martian air in it. Well, I think I prevented the Martian air that was in this airlock from going back into the base. I'll go check. That'd be bad. Because I want to do my base pressurization. But before I do the base pressurization, there's another little thing I wanted to do. Which is to get a little bit of iron. And make some party sticks. Not really. Road flares serve a purpose. Uh, so the reason why I'm using road flares is uh, the base is going to be really, really, really cold. Because the gases that I have in the holding tanks are really, really, really cold. Uh, so these flares help to heat up areas without outgassing anything. So I'll make 12 flares. Or 13 flares, that's fine. All right, so before I do anything else, before I actually turn on the mixers, which I won't do, um, well, we'll see. Hold on. All right. Did I introduce X? No. I have a little bit of CO2, but no X anywhere. I'm going to check all the floors here. No, there's no X here either. No X, good. Good, good. All right, the next thing I need to do is grab the... Oh, I'll go through the bottom here. That will work. I need to grab my um, air control consoles and swap out the power control consoles that I had. Which should be here. Power control. No, that's... Oh, my air control's in the uh, locker. Whoa, don't smash. Air control, air control. Good. Uh, some of the stuff I have in my backpack can get put away. So, put the wall away. Put the pipe. Nope. Yep, put the pipe away. Put the paint away. I'm just cleaning, tidying up. I don't have any place for frames or sheets over here. All right, fine. And put the baked potato away. Nope, not fully. All right, so let's swap out the control panels with air control panels. So get rid of the old power controls, throw in air control. And then I'm going to name these uh, AC3, air control 3.
AC2. And this should be already air control, but this is going to be AC1. All right, one last check, making sure there's no... Oh, it is vacuum sealed. Perfect. Um, let's hook this console up. So first... Oh. Air pressure gas sensor. Uh, so my outward vents are locked here. So actually, I'm not going to set that one up. Um, it's bugged right now, and I don't care to debug it. I can just as easily go up here. And yeah, uh, let's see. Is outflow locked up here? No, it isn't. Good. So inflow. I'm going to set these up as draft mode. So inflow, one, two, three, four, five, six. Outflow, one, two, three, four, five, six. And air pressure gas sensor. Done. Oh, uh, another thing I wanted to do is um, AC, make them slaves. Done. My base is pressurizing. Now, uh, the reason I have all these party sticks is uh, the base is really, really cold. And rather than to spend a ton of uh, batteries uh, to heat it up, uh, it makes sense to just light up a bunch of flares um, and heat it up the old-fashioned flare way. And that way our um, power tower doesn't get drained out so brutally. The flares uh, he help to heat up surrounding areas uh, reasonably well. And that should take some pressure off of our uh, space heaters. All right, checking the air quality. The mix is perfect, 21, 76, 2. That's exactly what we want. And it is heating up. It went, it's been going up a bunch of degrees. I'm just going to go around the base and do some analysis to make sure it all looks on the up and up. Also, making sure that we have water in the water pipes, which we do. Really low pressure, I gotta say. I gotta melt some ices. But we do indeed have water. Um, and I should also check air conditioning to make sure that there's a... I guess I can't actually look at the pipe in the cooler. But yeah, the base is pressurizing. As you can see, the external pressure is about 70 now. I haven't picked up any foreign gases that I wouldn't want. Um, all right. I'm not going to use this. This is for emergencies only. It is better to not use it because it's not pressurized to be used normally. And as you can see, the noises of the base are a lot louder because we've got air pressure, which is very, very cool. So now I'm going to go around and do some analysis in here. Jetpack on. All right, so this here might have had some Martian gas leak into it, but it looks like these vents, these uh, maintenance capture vents, captured a lot of the X. What was O2 and X? Oh, this uh, intake vent has X in it. Hmm. Interesting. But it's mostly N2 here. All right, so taking a look at this pipe here, its pressure is 101 kPa. Totally, totally good. It's not 
hyper-pressurized. Now the next thing I want to do is uh, go, back, go back outside. Also figure out why the X isn't flushing from this uh, pink pipe here. Uh, because if we changed the... Um, if we changed the uh, air control mode from draft, so draft basically takes two sets of vents. We have, sorry to do this at a distance, we have the outflow vents and the intake vents. If we turned it to pressure, the intake vents would reverse and all of the X that is in this uh, pink pipe would then flow into the base. Now there's not a lot of X there, but we don't want any X. So I got to figure out why X isn't being filtered out. Probably our X filters off. Our pollutant filter is turned off, that khaki colored filter. Or something, I, I, I have to figure it out. Um, so these external Atmo capture vents I can turn off. We have enough CO2, I don't need any more. So I'll flick them off, that saves a little bit of power. In fact, speaking of saving power, let's turn this off, this off. Everything in here off. Close this door in case I need to use it in the case of emergencies. Um, all right, I don't know if I need more flares, but I'm not going to worry about it just yet. Uh, so what I was going to say, I want to figure out why my pollutants aren't filtering. So that poses a potential risk. Ooh, but it's uh, it's getting warmer. Huh. So though the filter's on. I'm actually not entirely sure why it's not filtering. But as long as these inflow vents are set correctly, and it is set to draft mode, I should be all right. Looks like my flares are burning out. I'm gonna travel around the base and check the temperature everywhere. Um, the air pressure looks good, the temperature does not. I might make a few more flares. I don't wanna overdo it. And then I also have to make sure that all of the rooms are set to the same temperature because right now it's um the all of the temperature is pulling from this sensor here uh so i don't want the the temper or the i think it's the second floor i don't want the temperature sensor the room in the temperature sensor to be any hotter or colder than the rest of the base so i have to try to manually heat it up equally now it'll eventually hit equilibrium because it is one large room but it won't hit equilibrium quickly so for instance if i set 20 road flares off in my farm my farm would become superheated um but if the room below it wasn't superheated what that would ended up doing is it would cause my um it would cause the uh the farm's heaters to stay on even though the farm was super hot and the floor below it, um, because the floor below it detected that it wasn't overheating. So it's something you have to be cognizant of. And there's actually a project that I might be able to uh, do to fix that too. I just wanted to add. So it looks like my second floor, my second floor is the temp sensor. Uh, so I have to make sure that the second floor is and stays the kind of average of all the other floors. So that was five degrees. So my bottom floor is the cold one. And that's because it has a big tunnel underneath it with no heating. So let me uh, put more flares there. So the, the project to um, equalize temperatures a little bit better. Uh, let me go do that. While the base tries to heat up. 
sounds like a fun little project. I don't know if I have the silicon for it, but I can hope. All right, so that means I need, no, I, I don't have the silicon for it. I need plastic sheets. I'm gonna put away my power control. I don't need them anymore. Um, I will need glass. So what I'm gonna need for that is to, uh, mine up a little bit of silicon. So, sun setting. Oh, actually, let me check the power towers, too. Make sure that they look... Oh, they look unhealthy. They look... It looks like I really need to introduce some, um... Introduce some additional solar power panels. Uh, part of it is just because the base is constantly trying to heat up, and the heaters draw a crazy amount of power compared to everything else. No, so I'm getting ices too, which is fine. Uh, because we have pretty low water. But what I was really hoping for is silicon. So how much... Uh, most of this was ices. Teeny, teeny bit of it was silicon. Um, Alright. The ices are fine. I'll save them for later. I can use my furnace in the base to melt the ices into water to fill our water tanks up back up. But what I really want is the silicone. And this is so I can have the temperatures of my base equalize a little bit more smoothly. Alright, I won't spend too much more time mining. Two stacks or close to two stacks should be a fine amount for this project. Okay, this node probably has a little bit more hidden away that I can't find at the moment. Without a ground penetrating radar, it's kind of hard to find anyway. Because I'm seeing that it's reading silicon here or there, but it's not popping up. Okay, let's forget it. Oh, here's a different node. I'm just going to dig around it so I can show that there's silicon there for future reference. All right, I don't have the patience to use my uh, my uh, furnace at the moment. Oh, came in a little hot there. So I'm just gonna melt this the old fashioned way. And what I wanna be doing is walls. So kit walls, uh, which I need steel for. I'm just gonna put everything in my auto lathe right now. even though we really only needed the steel. And the silicon is going to go into the fabricator. The fabricator makes uh, plastic sheets, I think, a little bit more inexpensively where they are in this big list, I, I'm not exactly sure. You'd think it'd be near the other sheets, wouldn't it? Maybe they don't make plastic sheets. Uh, it does make glass more inexpensively. Oh my goodness. All right, I might give up on the uh, fab here. Okay, forget it. Pulling the plug. All right, so I need some walls.
and I'll just put the last chunk of silicon there and switch my belt. So we need, uh, how many floors? I have, I need like 12 walls. Twelve pieces of glass and twelve plastic sheets, I think, something like that. So I have the glass, but I need more sheets. Power, no. oh, I don't like hearing that. I'll fix that in a minute. Um, so plastic sheets I suppose the rest of the silicon I can just uh, save up for the solar power tower that I am having to expand upon soon all right so let's cook that silicon put this nugget away all right, um, let's, uh, let's see, let's see. I'm gonna go work on this little filtration project a little bit better. So to increase airflow before, between the floors, uh, here's the idea. I'm going to create a windowed tube uh, in the middle here and let airflow flow up and down the base um, so that we can increase uh, equalization more quickly. Actually, I didn't even need this many. Um, what's gonna be funny is I'm gonna have uh, some objects. All right, so I just, I just need to connect those floors. I don't need to that's it. All right, so I miscounted. My bad. I have more than I need. That's fine. Let's plastic these up. And then what I'll probably do is a non-pressurized grating or something like that um, to have between the floors so that we can stand on it, but it uh, it's not airtight. So that part is done. The next part is the floor grates. So floor grating, I'm fairly certain, is not airtight. It's just open grates that look uh, like this. And it will allow air to flow between the floors, but we'll be able to step on the tiles. So we need um, one, two, three, four of them. So here's four. I was just counting in my head. Put that silicon away. Uh, so let's go inside the base now. I'm also going to want to solve my power issues. Oh, I didn't put away any of the walls, but whatever. I can do that later. Let's solve the power issues as well. Whoa, so my airlocks are not set up for 100 kPa yet, which is why I had that flood of air. So I'm taking the uh, nuclear battery out of my old suit, or yeah, my old suit and throwing in the... Uh, the my empty battery into that suit. Which again, will draw even more power from my power tower, meaning I really should add some um, some love to it. But all right, here we go. For now, it's gonna be sort of a tube like this. Yeah. 
So now, once this equalizes, I will fall. There we go. Uh, yes, so instead of having a big, giant hole in the middle of my base, which obviously works for no one, not myself included, uh, I'm going to replace it with grating. So the, actually the, uh, yeah, get rid of that. And then delicately get rid of that. Put the plastic away. Uh, the grates might not be the most attractive uh, method of doing it. I could even have a small grate, but no, I kind of like grating number uh, three. Ew, that is particularly ugly. Let me see if there's something to be done. Crowbar, huh? All right, let's see all the options. Here's, oh, I don't even think I was putting it on the ceiling. So here's, nope, definitely not that great. Um... Oh, it was number two that I liked. Yeah, there we go. That's a little bit more organic. Let's go up a floor. and remove the got to be the right windows i got i got to be careful about this cuz i could very 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 easily vacuum my or breach the seal between maintenance and um and the the regular base oh man my tools i'm fumbling around uh yeah Those two windows. Floor grading three. All right. So now it's just allowing air flowing freely through the base through these here. Uh, I can still see the maintenance stuff through the windows, but uh, it should equalize even better now that I'm not relying on just the elevator shaft. I don't know how airtight the elevator shaft was. Which is why I'm uh, I'm doing it this way. So carefully deconstructing this window. And now uh, we've got better equalization. So uh, it's room three forty eight now. Make sure everything is still room 348, as it should be. As you can see, still room 348. Oh, actually, this is a different room, but that doesn't count because there's a door here. 348. All right. And these grates uh, connect the airflow which allows better equalization. Uh, and that still, it still looks, so I could actually unsuit right now. Uh, but it looks to me like I'm gonna need some uh, additional flares to kick the heat up. Uh, the issue is of course that the, um, the gas that was in my holding tanks were very, very frigid gas. And uh, it requires a little manual heating. Uh, but under normal base, once once I have the the sort of temperatures of the entire base sorted out, um, it should not be a common problem of needing to heat it up or anything like that. I'm also running out of storage down here, aren't I? I really don't have space for any of this stuff. Uh, I'm going to take the coal up because um, our power... I, I really do need to add some more... Oh yeah, as you can see, I'm, I'm just about out of power in this tower. Uh, I do need to add some more uh, solar power panels. But for now, I can just burn some coal and no problem. All right, uh, let's head over to our auto lathe. Grabbing the iron. And I'm going to err on the side of making the base too warm because um, 
the air conditioning is going to be significantly cheaper to use than the heating. So let's get it toasty. Let's get it up to like 30-ish degrees. That ought to be enough, I hope. All right, cycle, cycle, cycle. And I'm just lighting flares up everywhere. As you can see, the uh, the HAC, because the heating is drawing a whole lot of power. But soon, that might be remedied by my glow stick party. Alright, we got the glow stick party going on. Uh, let me take some... Oh. As you can see, the draft mode is pushing air around. Uh, because of the temperature differences in the base, uh, it's going to um, it's going to be drafty. But we're already at 10 degrees, which is warmer and warmer still. Uh, this is my temperature sensor, so it's going to heat the base based upon the temperature that is right where I'm standing. So it's still 10 degrees here. Um, And I'm just sort of moving around the base to make sure that it's heating up more or less evenly. It's a little bit warmer up here. I found an unlit flare. So let me go down here. It's probably colder down here because, yep, because of the, um, the sort of tube that's below it that doesn't get heating. But uh, at 10 degrees Celsius, I could take off my suit. And hit that um, that sort of uh, milestone. So let me go do that. Uh, helmet. Listen to all that sound. Suit. I'm just going to plop this here for now so it doesn't roll around. Uh, let's not take off my uniform. Glasses. And here we are. My, I never really designed what my character looks like. But... Uh, I think it got reset actually between versions. Uh, there I am. I am running around just sort of uh, enjoying the base in my skivvies or in my suit. In my uh, uniform rather. It is saying that I have a little bit low uh, O2 uh, warnings but um, that's just because it hasn't hit a hundred KPA. But it's I'm not gonna asphyxiate or anything like that. Unless of course I went through the um, airlock you know into Mars that would be bad we should not do that so I'm still just analyzing the temperatures and pressures around the base as they struggle to equalize once they equalize oh yeah it's it's a mite bit toastier up here so let me um take a few of these flares and bring them downstairs I have to make sure not to fall, because if I got, you know, I have no jet pack anymore. So I suspect it will be coldest down here, because there's not really a heater down in this tunnel. So I'll heat it up with the flares. And somehow or another, even though I don't have a suit, uh, I guess my uniform, let's just roleplay, my uniform has temperature sensors or something because you know obviously that's not the case but we are almost at 19 degrees uh on this floor which means that the heaters would kick off so i'm just moving these road flares and and soon uh just the heaters will be enough oh it's getting warmer in here as well yeah we're at about the temperature that we're hoping to have. Do 
trying to see the power tower from here. Eh, the power looks pretty low. I'm not gonna lie, but the sun's cresting now. And soon we won't be relying on uh, heaters anymore because, uh, as you can see, we just hit 20, which means um, we're pretty close to being able to uh, to lo no longer require heaters for the base. But yeah, that's a very nice milestone. I have fully pressurized and we have a great big farm to fill up with crops and some other things. I need to add some um, some additional solar power to the uh, to the array and maybe even some storage. But uh, that is going to be for another episode, guys. Oh, and of course the uh, the logic that controls the gas mixers and the uh, flood um, pump. So if you have any feedback for me, now's the time. If you have any projects that you'd like to see, stuff like that, uh, I am all ears. If you enjoyed this episode, just let me know, and I hope you tune in next time. I hope this has been uh, informational and entertaining, and I'll catch you all later. Thank you so very much for watching. Adios, everybody.